Hi, I'm Steve. And when Ian said that we were going to be focusing on Ezekiel chapter 37, I felt really excited, since it's a passage that God's particularly spoken to me through. So I'm really pleased to be able to speak about the filling with the breath of God. I plan to talk about hearing from God and being filled with the breath of God. So let's start with the passage. It's Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 9 and 10. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the wind, prophesy, O man, and say to it, These are the words of the Lord God. Let the winds come from every quarter and breathe into these slain, that they may come to life. I prophesied as I had been told. Breath entered them, and they came to life and rose to their feet, a mighty company. Now, some of you may know that the word translated as breath or wind in this passage is the Hebrew word ruach. It can also be translated as spirit. So there's an obvious connection here between the Holy Spirit and, and the wind in, in this and other passages. Now, the first time that we find breath mentioned is in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. The Lord God formed a human being from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life so that he became a living creature. Mankind is the only part of God's creation that he's breathed into, showing from the outset the special relationship with God and us. God's breath brings fullness of life. And who wouldn't want to be filled with the breath of God? The Greek word used for breath or wind in the New Testament is pneuma, as in John chapter 20, verse 22. Then he breathed on them, saying, receive the Holy Spirit. As Jesus appeared to his disciples after his resurrection, he said that he was sending them out, and then he breathed on them so that they'd be empowered by the Holy Spirit to do all that he told them to do. Similarly, in Acts chapter 2, verse 2, the coming of the Holy Spirit's power is signalled by there came from the sky what sounded like a strong driving wind, a noise which filled the whole house where they were sitting. And we all know where that particular filling of the Spirit led to. Pentecost. 3,000 new converts, and the beginning of the message of Jesus travelling around the world. I'll return to these passages later, but first let's stay with Ezekiel for a bit. <clears throat> now the visual image created by the imagination, in the imagination by this passage, is incredible. What a sight Ezekiel was privileged to see. In fact, the book of Ezekiel is so full of incredible visions and experiences that you begin to think that Ezekiel must have felt that normal life, apart from when he was receiving visions from God, was very boring. But on this occasion, in this vision, Ezekiel wasn't to be a passive spectator, as he had been before. Ezekiel had a part to play. It's clear from the very beginning of the chapter that Ezekiel was intended to be a key part of the process of the resurrection of the dry bones. Well, how was that? Well, by what Ezekiel said. And Ezekiel was in no doubt about what he got to say, because God told him. And everything takes place according to plan, because as Tobias told us at Woodford a couple of weeks ago, God always backs up his word. So hearing from God and doing and declaring what he says are pretty important. So since it's important for us too and not just for Ezekiel, let's think about the ways that we hear from God. Well, here are a top six. There are probably many more. But first of all, God's audible voice. 
There are so many examples in scripture and many testimonies from Christians down the ages who've heard God's audible voice. It doesn't seem to be that common for most Christians currently and not an everyday experience. But don't rule it out. God could speak to you in that way. Or it could be that we sense God speaking to us through our spirit. We just know that a thought or insight is from God. I think of this as like the still small voice in 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 12 and 13. Elijah is waiting to encounter God. There's an earthquake, there's wind, there's fire. But Elijah doesn't encounter God in any of these but in a barely audible voice. So if you think you have difficulty hearing from God, you're in good company. Elijah is regarded as a great Old Testament prophet, but he too sometimes had difficulty hearing God. But God does speak. Perhaps more commonly, we hear God as we read in scripture. You might be reading a passage that even though it's incredibly familiar and you've heard it and read it lots of times before, this one occasion something just leaps out and you see or understand or have a new insight. This is a bit like in 2 Kings chapter 22 verses 1 to 13 when the book of the law is found in the temple. It's found and it's read to the king, King Josiah. And he's so moved by how far from God's plan and law that the nation is, that he rips his clothes in grief. Now, I'm not saying that every time God speaks to you through scripture, you'll be moved to rip your clothes. But God does speak to us through his word. It could be that you hear God speaking to you through worship, through a song that just really touches your heart. Or it could be that we just know that God's speaking to us through a sermon or a talk or a devotional, during prayer ministry or during your own prayer time. It may be that outside in nature you connect and hear from God. Psalm 19 verse 1 says, The heavens declare the glory of God. So why would we not connect with God? when we see his creation. So there are many ways to hear God's voice. But perhaps we don't always think that we hear him because he says something and is saying something we don't expect. Perhaps some of the things we want to hear from God about aren't really what God wants to focus on at the moment. And so we have to take a position of faith and trust those things to God and focus on what God is talking to us about. It could be the unexpected. It may be that when you really try to focus on what God is saying to you, you only feel that you have a fleeting sensation or picture or an an image in your mind. Well, don't dismiss it out of hand and explain it away. Stay with it. Have a conversation with God about what you do have and ask him for more. Be like Mary. When Gabriel told her that she was going to have a baby, she said, how can this be? God isn't phased by our questions. Another important point is to keep listening. Don't give up. A child begins to recognise its parent's voice because it hears them all the time. And similarly, The more we choose to listen, the more we will recognise the voice of God. God never speaks to me is no excuse. You might sometimes have difficulty hearing and recognising, but God is always speaking and wants to speak to you. Let's return to Ezekiel and the breath of God. Verse 10 is a key verse in this passage. The breath came into them and they lived. 
It's just like at creation. So far, under God's direction, Ezekiel's prophesied and seen marvellous things happen. Yet, even though the bones have come together and are clothed with flesh, they're still dead until the breath, the spirit, is in them. Life, true life, life in all its fullness, only comes when God's breath is present. There are an awful lot of situations and people in the world that seem alive, but are lacking the breath of God, and so aren't fully alive. Hence, the Great Commission. Jesus commanded that we go and tell everyone about him. God wants everyone to have the fullness of life that he offers. Now the truth is that if you're a Christian, the Holy Spirit lives inside you. Romans chapter 8 verse 9, You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if in fact the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. So, if you belong to Christ, then the Spirit dwells in you. Or in 1 Corinthians 6 verse 19, Your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, and the Spirit is God's gift to you. Unlike the bones that Ezekiel saw, God's breath is already in us and we have life. Now sadly, there are times when we don't live and act fully in the truth of this fact. So why is this? Could it be that we get sidetracked into thinking that the physical world around us is the only reality? Like the atheist who might say that you live your life and when you die, that's it, end of story. Is it that we don't experience the realm of the spirit as readily as that of the physical? Perhaps we consciously or unconsciously take the view that all the Holy Spirit stuff is just for a particular group of Christians. Or could it be that we are just unaware of his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. That's in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. This statement about God's almighty power in us and accomplishing infinitely more is one that applies to all Christians, whether they lived in first century Ephesus or in the 21st century UK. It's like we're gas boilers. We live our lives with the Holy Spirit like a pilot light inside us. And just like the boiler, that's not just meant to be the pilot light, but ignited and full of flame, so we're meant to burn with the flame of the Holy Spirit. God didn't intend that the Holy Spirit would remain merely a pilot light with limited influence inside us. How else? Are we going to be able to do everything that Jesus said we would do? Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers and cast out demons. That's in Matthew chapter 10 verse 8. All this is certainly impossible for us to do unless we cooperate with the Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God. What we experience with our five senses is not the only reality. There is a spiritual reality too. And being filled and breathing with God's breath helps us to live in that reality. Now, New Age followers and those engaged in the occult know there's a spiritual reality. Everyone pursuing mediums, tarot readings, crystals, and a whole variety of other things are aware that there is something else, and they're looking to access and engage with it. So why is it that the church often seems to regard the spiritual reality as something written in the Bible, but to have no expectation that it can be the church's present reality? 
I believe that one of the things that God wants to say to the church at the moment is, wake up. Every time we pray the Lord's Prayer, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We are inviting God to be present in the world and God invites us to partner with him. That's what he was doing with Ezekiel. It's as if God was saying to Ezekiel, you've seen my glory and heard what I have to say to the nations. Now join in and partner with me to make it a reality. And God would say the same to us. See his glory. Encounter him. Hear his voice. Partner with him. So where are you with God at this moment in time? Is it that you need to encounter his glory? Or are you ready to hear or practice hearing his voice? Or are you at the partnering with God stage? Or any combination of all of those? Whatever stage you're currently at, pursue it. Not only for your own good, but also for the good of the world around you. Partner with the Holy Spirit and breathe the life-giving breath of God over yourself, your family, wherever you go and whoever you encounter in life. Finally, let's spend some time and wait on God. I'll start with a prayer and finish with a prayer. Don't be unsettled by the silence. And the question I want you to ask God is, what's my next step? It could be to encounter his presence. It could be to have a greater awareness of the spiritual realm. It could be to develop in hearing God's voice. It could be receiving revelation of how God wants you to engage in what he wants you to do. So, if we're sitting comfortably, I'll pray. Father God, we thank you that the Christian life is one of relationship with you. As we quiet ourselves now, let it be you that we connect with and hear. Thank you, Father God, that you promise to never leave us or forsake us. Let us be aware of your presence with us as we go into this next week and have a growing sense of the spiritual, the greater reality. Amen. I'd encourage you, if you felt God saying something, keep coming back to it during the week. <clears throat> Share with someone else. And if you didn't sense God saying anything to you, don't settle for that. Keep practicing this week. Thank you.